should you do a degree to work in cybersecurity? Better yet, if you are doing a degree, should you continue a degree if your plan is to work in cybersecurity? Well, to put a short answer, probably not, no. Here's the reasoning. There are three specific things we need to concern ourselves with when trying to answer this question. The first is cost. The second, opportunity cost. And the third, the sunk cost fallacy. So, cost. In the UK, students roughly pay £10,000 a year in tuition fees. And degrees are between one year for a master's and three years or a bachelor's. This could potentially lead to a cost of between ten thousand and thirty thousand pounds for the individual depending on whether or not they pursue a final master's program. However, there is a second hidden cost called opportunity cost that you also must take into account. This hidden cost comes from a loss of earnings for the years or months you've taken out of your work in time in the pursuit of education. For example, in the UK, I've seen individuals without degrees start junior positions within cybersecurity for between 35 and 40,000 pounds a year. This is your potential earning ability if you weren't doing something else, for example, in this case, going to university. That means that for three to four years, you are not working, you will be losing between 120 and 160 thousand pounds in earnings you could have otherwise had. This is something that most individuals never consider when agreeing to go to university. So let's catch up. We considered the actual cost of university, which could be between 30 and 40,000 pounds. We've also considered the opportunity cost of not earning money whilst you're busy studying university of potentially between 120 and 160,000 pounds. Now, obviously, those are best case scenarios. You must also have a job in that time. So, if we add those numbers together, we get 150 to 200,000 pounds whilst you attended. The first problem is you are now three to four years older than where you, you were before you started university. So if you plan to have a career of 30 years, if you went to university, that would now only be 26 to 27 years. On the back end of your career, you are now losing out on three to four years of salary earnings you could have otherwise earned at the start of your career. So you have the opportunity cost of not working is actually affecting you in real time, but not until you retire. You're punting your problem down the road for 20 to 30 years time. So that brings me full circle. Here is you at university. Here is your friend that never went to university. His career will be 30 years long. Your career will be between 26 to 27 years long because of university. But not only that, you will have between three to four years of lost earnings of between 35 
and £40,000. But it gets worse. You have also borrowed thirty to forty thousand pounds to go to university in the first place. However, there is a caveat to this story. This might all be worth the cost, provided in the twenty six years you work you are able to out earn your friend who does the same career path as you but never went to university you need to make sure that you will out earn your friend at the end of their career solely because you went to university if it is the case that you went to university and because you went to university not only did you earn more than your friend, but you earned enough over what your friend earned to pay off the student loans and some. If you and your friend get to the end of your careers and you went to university and they didn't, but you ended up with the same result, you've essentially broke even. At that point, you must also make a personal consideration of whether or not it was worth going to university because you just wanted to have a bloody good time. Or did you go to university because you weren't yet sure of what you wanted to do? Or finally, did you go to university because you genuinely needed the university and the education to out earn your friend or someone else that was in your position that otherwise couldn't have had the opportunity. That doesn't mean that university is necessarily a bad thing. Just that in cybersecurity and probably most technical roles, the skills required to get a job and start earning are things you can learn online and mainly for free. So does that mean that you should go to university or not go to university? Well, it's a personal decision. I say, most of the time, probably not. But this brings us on to our final point. Are you that person that is already attending university and has one to two years left? Using the same reasoning, when we buy a takeaway and realize we have bought way too much food, most of us will still try and gobble all that food down simply because we've paid for it. However, this leads into the problem, the sunk cost fallacy. You eating that food or not eating that food will not get back the money you otherwise would have spent. You are going to end up stuffing your face and getting fat and feeling shitty because you have some semblance that you're going to get that money back when in fact you are not. That is the sunk cost fallacy in a nutshell. And the same applies to all walks of life. In this instance, if you are a student in the second to third year of your degree and you are still yet to pay tuition either for a master's course after you finish or the third and final year, is it worth just trying to get a job? Probably. Because if you succeed, you're not only starting your career a year early, you're also not paying another year of tuition fees. And I can almost guarantee, especially in cybersecurity, not having that degree on your CV will make absolutely no difference to your career. The most important thing is, do you have the skills and the ability to do the job that people want you to do. Because after all, what's the point of education if it's not just to get a job? Maybe leaving early, if you have the opportunity, isn't such a bad idea. <laughs>